Welcome to The Rant. I'm your host, Herman James, and on today's episode, I'll be talking about work ethic. When I was growing up and looking to get my first job to pay for my own items, whatever I wanted to buy at the time, baseball cards, pogs, yeah, pogs were the shit, and any other fun item that I wanted to have that my parents weren't willing to buy for me, either because we didn't have the money at the time or because they didn't think it was a necessity, my parents did tell me about having a work ethic. They instilled the ability to work hard, do hard, and you'll be rewarded for the work you're going to do. You are voluntarily going into a field, into a job, and taking on responsibility that others aren't taking, and you were chosen specifically to do that for someone. So the very least you could do was your job. That would be whatever it is you are voluntarily putting a resume in, an application in for, to perform said operations. Since then, I have done everything I can in my professional life to make sure my work is always reflective of my hard working ability and skills so that everyone can see I am doing my best and I will be the best at what I do. Equally, I feel that my pay should be rewarded for the actions I'm performing and the jobs that I'm doing. Now, life has changed, things have changed, the recession I think changed a bit, but that didn't change the work ethic. I've noticed in the different industries that I've been a part of all over numerous different cities and different industries that the work ethic has completely fallen. When did it become okay to show up late, do half-ass amount of work, and expect to be paid more than people that are doing more than what you're doing? When did it become okay to be at a job automatically complain about the job you just got and the pay that you voluntarily received when you signed that contract. Now, this is a twofold issue, I feel, that is one from the employer and the other from the employee. On the employer side, there's literally no job training, a majority of jobs you have. You have some manual written by someone that doesn't perform the job, then being put into play by someone who never read the manual or never had to follow it and also probably doesn't like their job, now teaching someone that's probably underqualified and doesn't give two fucks about the job, they just want a paycheck so they can leave, show up late, show up drunk, show up high, and then wonder why you bitch about their performance. That's not how you train people. There's also companies that are going to say there's a mentorship. Hey, you'll be here. You'll be with the top so-and-so from this department. They'll show you exactly what they're doing. Well, let's be honest. The top person from whatever department does not want to spend their time with some low-level fuck who doesn't want to be there in the first place and doesn't know anything about what they're doing. You're now taking the top of the top and putting them with the bottom, and they've got to deal with all that horse shit. That's just going to piss off your top person, whether it's a salesperson, a manager, or somebody else, to then teach the new person that it's okay to be a pissed-off and angry employee because, hey, the top's doing it. I can do it too. If they're not in trouble for it, fuck them. I'm not going to get in trouble either. So now you've already ingrained how your company is going to work for these new fucks who are coming in and don't care. Now you've got all these people in between. You've got the assistants. You've got the heads of departments. You've got people that work in other fields, other departments, all within the same company who've been busting their ass for years for this company and seeing that you have this young fuck who's come in, doesn't care, didn't get trained, doesn't know their job, and they're getting paid more than you are. So, now you've got an angry young fuck getting paid more than your loyal good workers, and their good workers are now going to get pissed off. Why? Because your company can't afford to pay them, yet you can't afford to let them leave. So what do you do? You string them along. You have now harbored a fucked up, shitty work ethic from the top to the bottom that's been incorporated by osmosis into the middle because they've just watched everyone else do everything. They're also watching the new young fuck be able to be promoted for doing half of what they're supposed to do when they're not doing it well, but they're getting promoted higher. Why? Well, because usually nepotism in the workplace. So you've hired someone that is going to be your nephew, niece, uncle, aunt, child, best friend's daughter, 
whomever it might be, you've hired someone that you have a personal connection with. So no matter how fucked up their work ethic is, how fucked up their work is in general, you're still going to promote them because why? Nepotism. That's the greatest reason for a promotion and raise. Nepotism. You've done nothing. You produce nothing. You really are nothing for the company, but let's give you more money. Oh, wait, let's not just do that. Let's give you an office so you can be in your office and just watch your Snapchats and your Facebook feeds. You can Netflix all day long. You can watch whatever you want to do because you were out all night drinking. So I want to make sure that you have enough quiet and downtime in your own personal office so no one else sees that you're not fucking doing anything in the real world, in the company, and that way it doesn't come back to me. This is horseshit. You shouldn't be able to come into a company and sit there and do nothing, absolutely nothing, complain about your job, and then get a promotion. This is why employee retention is so small nowadays. You are physically able to walk into a company, spend the max of two years at a company, and then voluntarily leave that company for another company, which means the entire time you were at the first company, you were already looking for a job at another company because employer retention and company loyalty no longer exist. It is now cheaper for a company to have someone at lower pay come in and replace you or It's better on paper to hire someone fresh out of college with a degree to replace someone that's been there for five or 10 years. Or maybe the top salesman at a company, and it's now cheaper to undercut your territory by putting two and three people in your territory that you built up for the past few years, split up their pay so they're paying this person, these people, less than the one person that was there initially. So you have got absolutely zero loyalty to you so why should your employees have loyalty to you when in two years i can jump ship to a new company make 10 20 30 40 50 thousand dollars or more by just starting a new business with somebody else versus the half a percent raise that i might get from my current company with a review that's going to come from someone that doesn't know a fucking thing about what i'm doing there is zero loyalty from either side You combine it with the zero training and the shitty fucking attitudes from the new young employees that show up to work. And what do you have? You have a revolving door around an entire economic system that no one gives a fuck. There's no one watching. There's no one training. There's no one paying. There's no one staying. That sounds like a rap and I didn't mean to, but it works. So you don't pay people to stay. You don't pay people to go. You don't encourage education You don't encourage training. So you have people who are already addicted to cell phones and social media sitting at a desk all day and that's all they do. Maybe you're in a restaurant. Back in my day when I was in restaurants, cell phones weren't allowed on the floor of the restaurant. Now, go to a restaurant. Tell me how many waitresses and waiters you see with their cell phones in their back pockets. You see them on the side of the floor texting, phone calls, some of that extent. They're all on them. That's not what the business was supposed to be about. That's not loyalty. That's not customer service. That's not something I want to see when I am at a business. If I am ordering food, I want my food in a timely manner. I don't want it cold. I don't want you texting. I don't want you doing things when you're at my table with me. I don't want to see you on the side doing that either. Now, if you're at a strip club and you have a stripper on stage deciding to tweet and Snapchat while she's on there, you're probably not going to be happy because she's not shaking her ass for you. Or if you're at Thunder from Down Under. No, I've never been there. But you got these guys swinging their meat around. Instead of doing what they're supposed to be doing for you, they're texting. They're checking their Twitter feed and their Snapchat. But you're paying them to be there. And now this is what you get. You wouldn't be happy. You're not throwing your dollars anywhere. You're not putting a dollar in your mouth, which is fucking disgusting, in order to get your attention from them. It's not going to happen. But this is now the new norm. This is now what we consider okay with society. We want to say that we want a good work ethic. We want good returns on our investment of an individual, yet you don't invest anything into these individuals. You give them absolutely nothing and you expect the world. You tell them if they work hard, they're going to get a promotion. When the reality is, if you don't work hard 
and you lie about your results and the management thinks, eh, that's good. You're going to get your promotion. You're going to get your office. You're going to get your company car, company cell phone. You're going to get your paid vacation and fucking PTO. When did that become something that the hardworking individual is not supposed to have? When is the person that works their ass off for the company shamed because they want to have time off? You get these fucks who come in talking how drunk they are, how much they don't work, how much they would rather be somewhere else, and they get PTO requests approved instantly. They're out of the office. They're good to go. You've got people that have children who, oh, Timmy hurt his thumb. I've got to pick him up. I get it. You've got to be places to do things. But you have the same amount of PTO I have, how come you get yours and I get mine declined? I'm getting child shamed because you have a child. When did that become a thing? When did the hardworking individual become the detriment to the company? Is it because you didn't train enough people to do their job that when the hardworking employee needs to take time off, your company can no longer thrive and do well? That's not on that employee's fault. That's your fucking fault. You need to train your people better, cross train them and teach them that this is how you do your job. This is how you perform. And if you perform well, this is what you get. Not if you work harder and do more, I'm just going to ask you to work harder and do more again and tell yourself completely fucking burnt out that you're done with the company, you're done with the industry and you're done with these people. That is what this world has come to. Do less, work less, get paid more. Then move from one job to another job because your resume will read that you were here at this job and you were there for long enough where it no longer looks weird, totally okay to move. But when you look at it, you didn't do a fucking thing. Now you've got people that stay at companies for 5, 6, 7, 10, 15, 20 years. They have been there since before most of you were born. But you've got people coming in below them that do half-ass work, that get paid more than them, that have all these different jobs listed on their resume so they can move to a new company seeing exactly where they've been. That was not a thing. Your loyalty to a company was praised. You had headhunters coming out trying to pick up these great assets for a company to be an asset to another company. Not someone like to jump ship every two years. But jumping ship is now the thing. Why? Because again, the company can't pay you more than they can give you in a signed contract. You might get that half a percent or one and a half percent raise every year. Maybe, just maybe, if your manager decides that, eh, despite what your work ethic is and what you've done, you, you deserve it. It doesn't fucking matter. There are great industries out there that have a structured pay scale. So after every few years, you're automatically guaranteed to get X, Y, and Z. Or if you get a higher education level, you're guaranteed to get a higher pay rate. That is what you need to be subscribing to. Not this horseshit of, if you work harder and do more, I'll see how I feel at the end of the year if I want to give you a raise. If the company is being profitable and you have the ability to pay the right people the right amount of money that should not be a question but instead it becomes what's the bottom dollar do i really want to pay you to stay even though you're doing the best you're probably the highest performing salesperson in the company you're also the highest producing associate accountant whatever it might be or is it in the best idea of the company to just hire someone new hire two new people at a low 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 rate yeah, they won't know anything and we'll have to put Tony onto them because Tony will have to train them and Tony really doesn't know what he's doing, but he can read the manual to them and they can interpret that. So when they fuck up, I can yell at them and tell them that they were wrong even though you didn't provide them a mentorship or training program. Just do the right thing. Figure it out. If your company can't physically afford to give people raises, tell them that. Say, hey, This is what we're going to be at. We can't afford to do this. This is where the company is at this point in time. If and when we become profitable, we will give you X, Y, or Z. And for the employee, get that in fucking writing. You will get hollow promises time and time and time again. It's going to happen every time. And then you're going to be that disgruntled employee who is stuck there. You have people that are stuck at companies because they feel that they have molded their entire career 
and their professional life around exactly that job and can't go anywhere else. And that's horseshit. You absolutely can. You can do whatever you want to do if you put your mind to it. You can get out of that situation. You can be put into a better situation and enjoy more of what you're doing. And that's what you need to look at doing. And if the company cannot provide you the lifestyle that you need to have, and I don't mean in riches. I don't mean you have to have a million dollars out of KFC. And if you're listening and you are an employee of a fast food restaurant, and you're trying to support a family of five or six from three different baby mamas or baby daddies and thinking that's a justified idea, fuck you. Anyone flipping burgers isn't going to make shit. You're not supposed to. That's your fucking entry-level job. I'm talking about the individuals who are working in a career or a job field that actually can support them and their family. And that company isn't giving you the work-to-life ratio that you need and want. If you work all the time and you work at a thousand miles an hour every day and you do everything you can possibly do and you don't get time off, you will be burnt out. I am a workaholic. I love to work. I love to perform. I love to be out in the world and I love to do well. I love to make sure that I can help people in the fields of labor that I'm doing. Now, that being said, I also expect zero kickback and pushback. When I ask to take time off from work to do whatever the fuck I want to do, that's because I'm there on time or early most of the time. I stay till late. I do more. I work harder than most of anyone. And I shouldn't have to justify for any rhyme or reason why I want to have time off, nor should anybody else. If you are that key of a component to a company, there shouldn't be any question about you needing time off if you've got that a lot of time already accrued up for yourself, or maybe you're a salesperson and you don't have PTO because you're a commission-based individual. You need to go where you need to go and you don't ever stop working, but your office can't let you do that because uh, it would be a lot easier if we had you near and dear. Fuck that. If that person wants the time off, The company should bend over backwards to make sure that happens. They shouldn't ask questions. Oh, what are you doing? Who the fuck cares? Who the fuck cares? Let them have the time off. Let them do what they want to do because that life to work ratio, it is not just a slight importance. It's highly important and required. The people that work all the time are the people that become the disgruntled employees that don't want to be there anymore. They're going to sabotage your company because you didn't let them be them. Let them have their own free time and get out of the office to rewind, to reload, to recharge, to do whatever the hell they want to do because you require them to be there. Let that shit go. Let them be them. Don't let the young fucks who have never been in the corporate world before take all the time off in the world because they want to go to fucking Coachella or they want to go to a high times event. Fuck that. They should work the most. They need the experience the most. They need to be in the office to get to that dedication and loyalty status that the key employees that need the time off that you're fucking over want to have. That way, when you have company get-togethers that are after hours that are things that are in addition to their regular job, whether that be a baseball game, a dinner, a happy hour, or a volunteered labor or service you're trying to get your company to promote its stature to, these people all want to volunteer and want to be there. And instead of thinking about how horrible of an idea this is, how much they don't want to hang out with anyone in the company, or how much you're asking them already to do during their regular job, and now in addition to that, you want them to give up your free time. And they have to go on their free time when they really want it to do something more for the company and not getting recognized for it. Step it up, figure your shit out, and do the right thing. Instead of just hiring the next person off the street or your next relative or family friend of a friend, hire the right fucking person. 
make sure you train that fucking person well. You already told them that they're going to have this job and that they were going to be trained. So now step up to your fucking word and do it. And if you fucks that got the job, do your fucking best. Don't show up late. Don't show up right at that time. Your job is to start work at that 8 o'clock hour. So don't just show up in the fucking front door at 8 o'clock. Show up there early. Make sure you're on the fucking floor. You're on the fucking phone. You're at your fucking desk at 8 o'clock. Ready to go. Ready to fucking clock in. Not just to sit there and wait. I'm here. I'm going to get a cup of coffee. Now fuck you. Do your fucking job. Do what you're being paid to do. Now would you just want to show up and fucking get a paycheck later because Coachella's coming up. I want to make sure I can get out of the fucking office on time. And pay these people properly. If you have a half-ass employee who does half-ass work, you get a half-ass paycheck. Maybe get them out of the fucking office and get someone in there that deserves to have the job. There's always someone more willing to have a job to work harder than that person is who can't put forth any effort. And if you feel loyal to that person because you're someone's friend of a friend or they're your fucking family, they should have to work twice as hard, not half as hard, twice as hard to prove they deserve to be there because in everyone else's eyes they're a fucking pity hire and you put them in that place because you have some fucking bullshit deal with someone that you know or your family member in order to get them into that job to pay them to get your family member or friend off your ass fuck you do the right thing get the right people in there with the right fucking pay because if you get the right people the work goes well they get paid well then you get loyalty you have actual retention for your employees who don't want to leave they want the right team around them and hey maybe this when they ask for fucking time off they get it there's no questions asked or make sure that so and so and such and such is going to be there because they've had a lot of time off recently and they they deserve it fuck you your half-assed employee doesn't deserve a fucking thing except for pink slip get them out get the people with the right fucking attitude and the right background in treat them well because they will fucking leave you, you will be deserted, and they won't have any qualms about doing it. Because they'll leave you with your half-assed family member or fucking friend to sit there at their desk, twiddling their thumbs, watching fucking ESPN or fucking Snapchatting, because you don't care. You didn't watch them then, you not watch them now, and now the employee you had doing all the work is working for your fucking competitor, making twice as much, and making them God knows how much money because you didn't recognize them when they were for you doing everything they could for you working as hard and more than every other employee that you had making you and your company a fuck ton of money while you traveled around and didn't do a fucking thing now they're being recognized now they're gonna have their own fucking time off and not to worry about anybody else because that's all they fucking wanted that good pay for the good job and the good performance that they were fucking doing that you could not be fucking nice enough to give them the recognition or the pay or the time off to just fucking rewind reload and do it again for you and if you have the ability to work from home fucking do it that has such a high fucking appreciation and puts such high morale in individuals by being able to work remotely from home, not having to commute, not having to spend fucking an hour and a half, two hours, three hours just in traffic just to get to a fucking job where they're not appreciated because then they're going to fucking turn around and do it again. And for those of you with kids, that's the fucking holy grail right there. You don't have to go into an office and sit there all day. You also don't have to pay to have your children in childcare, which who knows what's going on with that one unless you actually know the person you can actually be there with your children you have to request pto and spend all of your time at work to leave work to take care of your kids when they're sick you can physically be there when they are and for those of you who don't have kids working remotely works great you can be on the fucking slopes you can be at the beach you can be traveling the fucking country or the world and you can still work you're not strapped to a desk you're not strapped to an office you're not strapped to a car you're able to move freely and for the employers that don't allow that but have that opportunity and you aren't allowing it, catch up. It's 2018. It's not a thing of the future. It's now a thing of the past. It's a present day thing. Fucking step it up. Let the employees do the right thing for you. You can keep them longer. You'll have great employees. Just fucked up, shitty, young retarded little kids who don't know what the fuck they're doing. They have no work ethic and you can't figure out why you can't make quota. Do the right thing. Be the right person. Get the right job. Get the right employees. 
So when workers like me show up to the office, we don't have to worry about these fucking idiots with no work ethic compared to my stellar work ethic and get pissed off on a daily basis and think, eh, fuck you. You're not worth it. That's all the time I've got for this episode. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this with all your friends, family, and coworkers on all the social media platforms. We're on everything from Facebook, iTunes, Twitter, Instagram, and everything in between. You can also find us on the No Phony Podcast Network. That's nophonynetwork.com. Or you can also go to the hermanjames.com send me an email drop a line see what you have to say love hearing back from everybody and until next week can't wait to be back in your ears